All right, this is the version of the song for my lawyers. I googled the three top lawyers in, in uh, employment law, and I found, found a lovely lady who's uh, been in the military, and a lovely young man who uh, has red hair. That sounds good to me. I think you do a pretty good job. But I don't normally just talk to people I don't fucking know. And that's a if I'm not able to trust you yet, then I don't think you understand what great golden things are about to await you. I know that you are going to love driving Centurion out of its majestical little seat above the law. Because you did something. You became great lawyers for a good reason. I trust people who do things for the right reasons. I just do. My professors, my therapists, my parents, my lovers, my grandparents, my family, my friends. I trust all of them so I don't think I'll be going back. But I don't know you yet. So, here's what we have. Multinational corporation with a terrible record of losing lots of cases or a great record of getting away with a bunch of bad stuff that they know will be much easier to pay off in court. A uh, young guy once lived here uh, in, the, in the townhouse is actually next door. And had a child and had a terrible, terrible time afterwards because it didn't work out because he was 18. And through having a job as a landlord that he actually asked the universe for, like, which was weird, but like, through that, okay, I actually got back a part of my soul, and I did a great job for that reason. It's just like every person I met in this building was an awesome person, and I did a great job, but along the way I was told basically not to talk to those people and to assume they were all liars, and I kind of played along with that on the corporate level because I've been doing that my whole life, you know, pretending to rich people that I'm smart, well, I don't have to pretend I'm smart, but pretending that I agree with them, that there's all of those people. But anyhow, I also discovered something very egregious uh, with the Holman leases, and I found something even worse uh, with um, a major mushroom company. So I'm a little bit worried that two companies that are worth two billion or so um, are not something I can really take on uh, through straight protest. But I will tell you this, Mr. Anderson and, 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 and et al. I just like using your name because of the Matrix. Um, Mr. Anderson, that's awesome. But anyway, yeah, I'll tell you this, like, like I don't want to go to Toronto because Toronto probably has lots of friends with Centurion, let's be honest. And I also want someone to fight for Waterloo Region who cares about it. And if you live here, I guarantee you, you are not going to like what you hear from me. It is disgusting, not just how they have treated me, but the people in this fucking building. And I think you're going to be really good. Like, I'm like, I don't know, caring about that. So I hope you do. Otherwise, you just missed a big opportunity. And thank you for liking my music. And I'll have an album at some point if you want to buy it. All right, let's get back to the song. I don't think I'll be going back. Sorry about that. I think that the life that I had was not the one that I wanted. So now I'm going to try and sing for my supper. And I don't know quite how to sing. But that's another thing I don't really like. Is that we expect all things to sound the same even. Do you realize the poor black mentality that it must happen to incur? Upon a mind like mine, for sure, it would break and crack. Fishers, uh, levees, the entirety of my body's country's soul feels raped and wronged and destroyed and stepped on and told to go starve in the street. So you'll pardon me if I do not wish to seek re-entrance to a world that hates people like me and you. Because you may not think that this crazy little white guy has anything to do with people like you, but the fact of the matter is one day you'll see they think of us all as the same city, the same country of batterings and financial economic dustbins. And I am tired of not being angry and loud about this. The last time in my teens, I think 18 years old, was when I had so much faith in change. And since then it has been, like for most of us, a slow diminishing of these goals, a, a collective unconscious uh, acceptance that, oh yeah, we were such silly kids when we believed in actually revolutionizing systems that we know are still broken. Who did we think we were? Ha ha ha. Let's go to work. Then to the bar. Then hang out. That's about life so far, guys. Yeah, no, I'm done. And I don't fucking blame anybody. 
because that's not like that's not something that, that comes to me out of out of one idea. This my whole life I've I've been I think leading to this moment, and I don't think that I'm plagued with a messiah complex or or or, or unintelligence. I think that synchronicity or or fractal chaos is probably partially it, what's going on here. But I'm not that good at science because. You know, I smoke a lot of pot after, uh, you know, during lunch at high school, and science was always that class you missed, you know? Anyways. I think this world is nice. <laughs> uh, but I do know that I felt it. just enough in this world to think there is a reason you are agitated and angry, because you are right now, as you were 20 fucking odd years ago, and you think, I am such a person that I I just do not, I gave up on care, giving shit about myself years ago. But when I see others being manipulated or hurt, and when it, my own family and friends, I feel I have to, to draw lines between them with anger in order to stick, just to have the, the ability to pursue more understanding of that fact. I hate that they've got us all wrapped around the same finger. That bothers me. There's you're so many good people I've met, and they're trapped doing monotonous tasks, not because they couldn't do something else, but because they were robbed away from wherever community they were, thrown into a fucking city and forced to do whatever they had to do. I'm so tired of people saying this is just the way the world is when the fact of the matter is it really isn't, hasn't been that long, and many parts of the planet still are not like it. Stop telling me that just because you do not understand anything else, that I cannot. And I will accept that if I, it's a way that I can inspire you someday to, to, do, to be able to, to not live this ridiculous, ridiculous idea of, of saving for retirement and old age and keeping ourselves healthy for old age, I'd love to see where you're going to be because I've seen where my grandmother was and pff, that was supposedly in the nice place. But the truth is, like, what are you saving yourself for to shit in your fucking pants and have some person who doesn't like you uh, bathe you? I, what? What? Is it for your children's education so they can go through the same rigmarole? There was a, there was a time when, when everybody understood that family and community was central to this place. This country defends itself, not so that it can bitch and moan and blame those around it who have just gotten here. Blame the overarching structures that particularly like to over, um, uh, condensely populate them. But no, you want this world to be, I suppose, clean of all of... I try. And that is not me. I'm not self-harming. I'm not going to harm anyone else, because I, I like to leave that little liability there, huh? Because, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not letting anyone get off that easy. No. I, I will protest with my heart and mind. I am going to be 40, and I have found the two things I love most, helping others and making music. I have forgiven myself and others for every trespass I have helped. Children, I have helped children of men talk back to their, their, their fathers after years. I have my sisters, my lovers. They know I'm a good man. Why the fuck do I have to prove it to anyone else, I suppose, right? Alright. This one, whoopsie! NASA's protest, yes. I will be getting my wife into safety and her child and our beautiful family. They will be fine. And I will stay here. I will stay here as a protest to the treatment of families, of elderly, of the disabled, of the mentally ill, of Canadians. Until... Those people have been all given the entirety of upgrades that they deserve. And I have my day in court on the basis that my human rights have been violated. I have been stripped of a place to live. I have been stripped of a job I was never trained for and actually exceeded on paper what they expected. Meanwhile, I was tried upon every level to try and, and, and flip into a, a cold or, or a darker human being. But unfortunately, my wife cleaned this building like a saint. And what happened is, I've had lots of time to figure out all the secrets and all the disgusting things that Centurion Property Management does. And I have also Googled them to the point of knowing that they will get away with it in court and pay it off anyway. So I am protesting because I know that the revolutionary spirit of every great, every great thing in this fucking universe always begins with someone saying, no, sir, I do not think I, I will. Not. Please, sir, can I have some more? Otherwise, you can give me my job back. But then, unfortunately, I'll do it so well that, once again, you'll look bad. I have not been fired for anything other than being a whistleblower who has not yet been heard. And I will tell you this. On live TikTok, I will be dragged out of this place. I will be dragged out, and I will not be violent, but I will be on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook Live. I don't give a shit which one, because I know 
that the subcommonly Marcos led revolution in Chiapas, Mexico has always stood because there is always someone watching from the rest of the world. Well, I am in the rest of the world, so I will need lawyers as well. And I will be dragged out because this is not as free as the jungle of Mexico is. And that is a great irony that perhaps I will laugh about with one of my university professors who will have to bail me out. But I will not be violent. I will be honest. And that has suddenly become a crime in this country. And that does not surprise me, and that is what is saddest. That I have to stay here even though I can easily have the financial ability of my family. But the point is, someone else wouldn't. And the point is, I had very, very well taken care of myself up until this point. And I was broken, nearly killed myself, stayed around so my wife could get better, and then realize I'm not even fucking close to being done yet. No, no, no. I don't need to leave this place. My, my friends will drop out my back window, whatever I need, I'm sure. Maybe I'll sleep on the couches of some of the people in this building, but you'll never know who. Because I'm not a fucking rat, nor do I think calling out this company for taking Cambridge's last opportunity to keep its people inside of its fucking homes a little bit more gracefully has been not just illegal, but immoral, unethical, and goddammit, if you didn't just wake up the inner heifer in me. <laughs> yeah, you're done now. I'm dragging you back down to hell with me. And I don't care. So this is a protest. This is a legal occupation of a unit by not only an illegally fired employee, but an illegally evicted tenant. And I am going to rain hell upon all of you. Through lawyers <laughs> and social media. Because I can't actually do anything because I'm just a dude. I used to cut meat, but also went to the University of Medicine Pool people and also went out to BC and like saw like Emily Carr's like culture and stuff. Like, man, I've been all over, but I can always tell evil when I see it because I've never really seen it. But you, Mr. Nisham Ali, you're coming with me. Oh, yes, you are. All right, that's about 12 and a half minutes. Why don't we just cut this one out now and start another? Because I'm also going to be donating free songs to anyone who wants to give me food or future shelter. Because I think I'll protest not just you, <coughs> but the entire structure that tells me I gotta go find another you to fuck me in the ass so I can find another landlord to fuck me in the ass. Fuck you. My last name is Hafernan, which means the Gaelic Hefer, meaning demon, and Tharnan, meaning hell. And I like to think... I can see demons clear as day. And there might be one in me, and there might be one in you, but I guarantee we're both welcome where we're going. Because I might have a sketchy past, but motherfucker, I guarantee you, your family's basically, or your company, I mean, is basically the Nazis of modern day. Once it hits the papes, oh, you're done. But I've been playing for a bit with you. Because I thought I would let you go to the depths of the degradation first. But the problem is, your people threw out a guy from the Holocaust of his own place by manipulating him into thinking he was getting renovations. You're fucking, you don't give a fuck what you gotta do, because they must be paying you well. Well enough that I'm gonna take all that and give it back to this community. For sure. Yeah, no, we're going for everything, folks. I'm gonna fix Cambridge with the money that's coming out of this goddamn forsaken evil corporation. And I don't blame anyone working for it now, but in about fucking, I don't know, six months when COVID comes down. Well, you're going to have to take a side because you can't be a Mitlaufer, which is a M-I-T-L-A-U-F-E-R in German meaning follower. And you do not want to be a follower. You want to be a resistor. There's much more comfort and community in it. All right, guys. This one, Mixie. This one, Mixie. It has got to sign out now. Is he hungry? <laughs>